Hello and welcome to the Dead Air Dudes. I'm Izzy. I'm Raka. Yes, Dead Air Dudes Nation, how are you? Welcome we are back again, this time with a comic book review. This is a comic book line um, from Image Comics, Stray Dogs. Yeah, it's a series that came out last year. Do we was it last year? Actually, it was so. probably a, it was probably last year, the year before. Okay, now this is uh what we reviewed is the full series or the full five issues collected in a nice little paper trade paperback right there as Rocker is holding his hand. And it is written by uh what Tony Fleeks Fleeks Tony Fleeks and artist uh, Trish Forstner. And let's do a real quick page flip here. Page, page flippy. Kind of hard to do with this angle. Now, if you if you see, wow, it looks kind of a uh, you know like Disney animation or all dogs go to heaven. That is purposely done because it is a adults only series where you have cutesy little dogs in a sinister, sinister story. Okay. Where you have all the dogs who um they're all I mean quick synopsis very quickly. You have this new dog. I forgot her name right now. She's Sophie. Sophie. Okay, I'm not a dog. I'm not, I'm you know, yeah, she's a I don't know, one of those small dogs. There you go. All it's right. a Pomeranian or something. There you go. So the she is just been adopted to this house of this guy who who has a bunch of dogs. All right. Master. There you go. The master. And uh when she goes there, she's very scared and very skittish. She, she meets all the new dogs. And then one who looks who looks <laughs> very eerily like the like like uh, what's his face from All Dogs Go to Heaven. Uh he you know welcomes her and you know and tells her the, the, the introduce her to everybody and you know say this is the master, he feeds us, he bathes us, he clothes us, he's all he's great. All of a sudden, you know, later on that day, the master comes and gives her put because she seems she's she's uh cold, puts a scarf around her neck. Right. That same dog brings that scarf and it it jars a memory. Triggers a memory. Now, this is something which I don't know, you know, if Rocker knows, if anyone out there knows. I mean, I'm not sure if anyone knows. Do what do dogs have? short-term memory or long-term memory see i don't know that myself i don't know how even somebody comes to that conclusion i'm sure there's some extensive pet experiment on but if it is in fact true the premise of the book is all these new dogs are moshed together by the master into his home taking care of it everything Mm -hmm. and they basically live in in dog heaven and only when a memory which was not supposed to be found was triggered did one of the dogs Sophie did remember she recalls the poss strong possibility that her ma her owner before was killed and killed by this new master and right. that's how she ended up here now Seems like the other dogs are just so freaking dog happy to be taken care of that they could care less and don't even remember that. Nobody remembers except a few and a few of the dogs. And there's a room. See, this is where it gets really cool. There's a certain room they're not allowed to enter, right? And by accident, they, they tiptoe into that room and they find some very concerning stuff. Yeah, and they find items and what, what, what I guess... Women's clothes. What gets what um, triggers them to remember is because obviously dogs with their sense of smell, they smell the items, which in turn also triggers them, triggers a memory. And they come to find out that, yeah, not everything, I, I won't spoil it for you guys, not everything is as it seems. And it seems that uh, there's something amiss. And the master has some explaining to do. Okay. So it's action packed. The artwork is beautiful. 
It's well written. You could totally see this as a movie and or show. Good which, animation, I guess. Yeah. I had heard that they it's been optioned and there may or may not be a sequel. There was a, a two issue, I guess, called Dog Days, which we'll, we'll do that as well. And there's going to be something else coming on into the future because I had heard an interview with the two creators and that they were talking about that's nowhere near soon, possibly sometime end of this year. So this movie, if it if it's a movie or a series, it we it has to be done an animated, and it's obviously not for kids; it's for adults because of the subject matter. But it's very well done, and I enjoyed it. It was it was it was good stuff. Yeah, I thought the artwork was very consistent in keeping you with a um, Disney like yeah um uh, uh illustration at the same time. Not that it got graphic. But it's well done in the sense where it alluded to a lot of things yeah. that you would expect yeah. from a Buffalo Bill, from a, a Hannibal Lecter's home, uh, things being uncovered. And with limitations of what dogs are, language, right? Again, no big spoilers, but there's a scene where they, they all kind of figure out they're in danger to try to call. Uh, and it's an old style phone. It's like a house phone to try to call. And all they can say is, we got to call for help. But what translated is, roof, 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 roof. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, they can't open doors. <laughs> if the door's open, they can push it open, but they can't open. They can claw and paw their way through dirt and stuff like that. So it got creative, which I give them credit for, because the story itself is interesting. I wouldn't go and say, oh, it's it's, it's uh, cutting edge and brand new, but it is creative in a sense of, from the dog's perspective, of discovering that your master is a serial killer. And spoiler. yes, big spoiler word. Um, but anyway, if you don't know, I, I you kind of know going into it, they're not just a bunch of collection of stray dogs. That's the story. No, the hook is how things will play out for these poor dogs at the end. They don't have anyone to speak for themselves, and the master's the master. He um you still bow down to him because he feeds you, he shelters you. You play around. You have a whole backyard of poop and crap and play, and you have other dogs around you. You're in dog heaven, except you're not. Exactly. So all in all, uh, Rocco, what do you give uh, the? What's your rating for this? All right. So, you know, again, you have to take into account the, uh, the illustration, the creativity, how it plays out, the voice of the characters, and how it ends. Um, <clears throat> I give it a pretty good. Seven out of ten. Um, if I can rob a few things from it, not sure. I like how the ending goes. Not quite sure how I like the absolute ending. It's still a little open ended, but open ended to a sense of pity and lack of resolution. If that's lack of satisfying resolution to me. Well, I, mean, I think I, I would have liked to see some something a little else. If, if it goes dark, I think it should go really dark. I think the the ending, the the total ending, as Rocco mentioned, I think it's more of a open ended, just in case. Let's go back to these characters for a sequel, if you know whatever. But uh, how the story ends, it's it's good. It's good. I give it what seven, seven four out of ten. So I'm... we're in the same neighborhood. My only other criticism is something you had mentioned about dogs and memory. If you go one route, it's kind of hard to have one or two dogs be exception. It's also hard to say, well, if are we doing absolutes? If all dogs don't have long term memory, why does she? Why did Rusty? Why did a few ones do? If you don't. They didn't really delve into that and why. I don't think they did. I think I think it's because of the certain objects that they remember. Because even at the absolute at, at the absolute ending, you can tell that it's not, you know, it still confines to this, to the parameters of the story. I did in a weird yeah. way found a connection to uh what's that term in Shawshank Redemption? Institutionalized where some of the dogs have been just there so long and from a young age, oh, yeah. they bought into it. 
hundred percent. They know nothing else. Don't fuck up their structure. One hundred percent. But let's not let's not get into that because that 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 goes into the the other other parts. <laughs> yes. Of the- all right. So all in all, absolutely pick it up. I think it was a very entertaining read. It's a little different than others. It's not super dogs. They're not superheroes and special powers. Um, it's a sort. It's kind of a sad story, but plays out in a um, criminal minds kind of way. Yeah. Now, as far as collectors are concerned, uh, you all you comic collectors out there, the book in itself, the first issue, the first printing, was going for about approximately at one point. I think it peaked at about a hundred dollars. Now it's somewhere wow. between. I think you could probably get it for 30, 40 bucks. Now there's a a, a bunch of different variant covers, which was cool because each variant cover went after uh old 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s horror film. And all the stray dogs, they were it, you had a scream cover, you had a pet cemetery cover, you had a Halloween cover, etc. Signs of the lambs cover. Exactly. And then which that, that's one of the more famous ones, Signs of the Lambs cover. So <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, I myself have all the books, and I do believe I have one sent out to CGC because I thought it was gonna really blow up, but um, it still might, and you never know if the yeah. projects they're after exactly. uh, raise the value. It comes up. I mean, it's still a book to get if you can get it for a decent price, first printing, or if you get some of the some of the. Some of the cheese, uh, the one in 100s, the one in 50s, the one in uh, what was a uh, hold on to it, take care of it, send it out for a rating, and do your thing. So, all in all, pick it up, check it out. I'm Izzy, I'm Raka again. Thanks for liking, subscribing, and remember, always, always save the whales. Take care, guys. <laughs>